to do. And we need to make, we need to make a lot of money. So that's number one. Whatever business we go into has to be lucrative. Number two, it has to be moral. It is very rare, if ever, actually I can almost guarantee this, you will never find an orthodox Jewish man in the strip club business. Yes, it makes a lot of money, but it is not a moral business. Let's talk about some businesses that do make a lot of money and are moral. So let's just talk about like real estate, for example, okay? Let's call real estate one of the core businesses. So here's the circular economy explained. So a Jewish man gets a real estate deal, let's call it 200 units in the Bronx, okay, somewhere, right? And he buys the deal. First of all, the deal most likely is probably coming from a Jewish broker or one of his other Jewish friends in the real estate business. So once he secures that deal, he needs to go finance that deal. So who's the next, the first logical person for him to pick up the phone to? A Jewish friend that is in finance, right? There's Jewish people that own banks. There's Jewish mortgage brokers. There's Jewish lenders out there. He's going to pick up the phone and he's going to call his buddy that he sees in synagogue every day because his buddy knows that he's a good guy. He trusts him and he knows that if spit hits the fan, he knows exactly where he sits, exactly where his house is, exactly who to talk to to make sure he could get through to him. So Jewish businessman is going to buy the piece of real estate. He's going to want to finance it with one of his Jewish buddies. And now he's going to have to service that piece of real estate, right? There's snow removal. There's cleaning supplies. There's uh, construction that's going to need to be done. All of those He's going, to try to ha he's going to try to hire Jewish people and Jewish companies in order to try to fulfill this. And I'm going to explain to you all why. It's going to make sense to you, like I said, by the end, but you've got to stick to the end. So now he's hired his buddies to do the construction, uh, like I said, to do the remodeling, to do the construction supplies. Whatever it is, he's going to try to hire Jewish. And now those companies, so for example, like the, as I mentioned, the construction company, right? Construction. That construction company also needs services. The construction company needs accounting, it needs advertising, it needs office space, it needs all types of all types of ancillary services. So even the the supporting the direct services to the real estate, the supporting service, right? The construction company, we're just using one of them for example, he is gonna try to hire Jewish people to do his indirect services. He's going to hire a Jewish business accountant. He's going to try to hire a Jewish lawyer. He's going to try to rent his office space from his buddy Shlomo, who owns the office building right next to his synagogue. You see what I mean? He's going to try to give that business to those people. And by the way, all the while, all of these people all along the way, guess what they're all doing? Circular economy. They're taking tithes. They're taking at least 10% of their earnings, of their profits, and they're pushing it down to charity. So that means, and by the way, their own charities, their own synagogues, their own schools, their own food banks, their own disability centers. Why? Because they want to create this circular economy. Now, let me tell you why. You might say, you might be watching it this far. You might say to yourself, how is it fair? Why is it okay that they can do this, that we can do this? First of all, not only is it okay, but you're going to understand why and how you could apply this to yourself and your community going forward. So let me give you some reasons why a circular, circular economy is good for you. So number one is, this is probably the biggest one, trust. Everybody in this circle, okay? If he has a problem with, let's say his, um, let's say the real estate guy has a problem with the company that's supplying to him his supplies, you know, his cleaning supplies for his, uh, for his building. And he has a dispute, right? So he ordered $10,000 worth of garbage bags. The garbage bags turned up faulty. Now they have a problem. So he knows, the real estate operator knows that if he has a problem with any of the people that he's doing business with, because they are Jewish, they have common friends, they have common rabbis, they have common associates, and they will be embarrassed to screw each other. They won't mess each other up because they go to synagogue with each other. They go to school, their kids go to school with each other, right? So they're going to be very careful in order to treat each other with respect and dignity. So trust is the number one thing. Here's another thing. They think the same, okay? A lot of times, you know, I'll get on the phone with people from different cultures. I remember when I was in, I was in the, I was in, I was the vice president of my college. And I remember people think different. We had somebody who represented the LGBT community. We had somebody who represented the African-American community. We had somebody who represented the Chinese community in the school. We had the evangelical community. All of us came to the table. We were trying to make policies. And I remember we all thought very different. We all had different priorities. So you want, they're creating this circular Economy, why? Because they think the same. And then number three is because they're a big family. We are a big family, right? So it makes sense that you should want to see the people around you succeed. It makes sense that you should want to give the business to your brother, to your neighbor, to your cousin, to your uncle. Why? Because we are taught in Judaism, and I see a lot of communities, they, they don't understand this, and they have to get better at this. We want to see each other succeed. 
We want to see each other grow because we understand. Check this out. and It's all going to start to make sense, right? I told you to watch to the end. We understand that if we are all doing well, the excess flow of all this money gets pushed down back into the community charities. So when, when my neighbor, my Jewish neighbor does well, and he's making a lot of money, and he now is going to donate that money to my kid's school, right? Let's, let's say that's one of his charities, right? He's going to donate that money to my kid's school. That's good for me. My kid's going to have new, black, new whiteboards, new blackboards. He's going to have new equipment, new gyms, new whatever it is. So I want to push money, and I want to push business towards people in my economy, in my community. Why? Because my community directly benefits. And when my community is doing good, I benefit from that doing good. So this is not unique, by the way, to the Jewish community. I don't care what, what sect you're from. I don't care what religion, what race. Everybody could establish this circular community. I hope